Hi, thanks for joining me for this overview of Geographic Calculator. I think it's important to familiarize ourselves with the app when it first opens, because once we understand how the app is laid out, we'll see how easy it is to access all of the application's functionality. The start page here gives us our job guide. Jobs are unique tasks that can be completed in Geographic Calculator. Jobs often reflect a certain type of data they can work with, such as the vector data conversion job or will provide us um, with a certain type of functionality. And we'll dig into that a bit more shortly. Selecting any job from the job guide on the start page will give us an overview about the job, along with supported input and output file formats so that we know what types of data these jobs can work with. I find the search bar at the top of this uh, job guide to be handy for new users. Uh, when we're unsure what type of job our file can be used in, simply selecting that file here will allow us to see a filtered list of jobs that might be applicable depending on our workflow for that file. The left hand side of the application here is the default location for the project manager. Any variety of jobs can live in a given project. The project manager shows us all current projects. So in this case, I have one called project and one called special features with a variety of jobs listed in each. We can add existing jobs to projects, create new projects and more all from right within uh, the project manager all making organizing workflows very straightforward. When we consider projects, the jobs they contain, along with all the layout settings and a number of other preferences controlled in the app, all of that is saved in what we call a workspace. So for this example, I'm in a workspace that is called Roadshow 2020. I have two projects, again, as I mentioned, and each project has a variety of jobs in it. I'm going to go ahead and minimize my special features job, uh, project, and that's more really just some advanced functionality that we, we might get into later. But let's move on and take a look at some of the more popular jobs that are available to us in Geographic Calculator. I like to start by looking at the interactive conversion job. Uh, the interactive job allows us to convert or transform one source point from one system to another. So in this example, we have a geodetic point, uh, latitude and longitude, that we are going to convert from its source datum, in this case, NAD27, uh, an older uh, datum for North America, to the new uh, more current datum in North America and projected uh, into UTM zone 19. Um, the job is generally set up as we can see here with a source coordinate system, a target coordinate system, and the coordinate transformation we're going to use to get um, from one to the other. And this layout carries over throughout the majority of the software. So things are very straightforward to us. Once we understand the basis of one job, we can apply that to a variety of other jobs as well. The coordinate transformation option here is probably one of the most powerful options within the application. It allows us to choose how we're getting from the source into the target. Most GIS software doesn't make this easily accessible. Um, because they assume you don't need it. But when we do need or are required to have this level of detail, Geographic Calculator is really the software you need for it. Data transformations certainly um, are complicated, but they can be a powerful thing. And Geographic Calculator really helps us make it easy to manage them, uh, as we'll see in a little bit. Before we move on from this job, it's probably worth noting that an interactive job also allow us, allows us to perform um, both forward and inverse calculations. Uh, a forward calculation allows me to start at a given point and based on a given distance and azimuth, determine where I will end up. 
Conversely, an inverse allows me to define where I am starting and where my endpoint is and calculate how I get between the two. So just a couple other different ways to use the interactive job. The point database conversion uh, really expands on the interactive job. So what it allows us to do uh, is transform a larger number of points at once. And these points are often saved in some type of spreadsheet format. They'll all have the same source coordinate system and be transformed to the same target coordinate system uh, using the same transformation. You'll note that the main parameters here are very similar uh, compared to the interactive job. Again, things are very straightforward. Um, and in this case, we just get a preview of the data that we'll be working with. Some of the extra parameters here simply allow us to identify where the data is stored within the spreadsheet. And you know, for those of us who are more familiar with GIS and a traditional desktop GIS, um, I think it's worth noting that um, we don't always think of data in a spreadsheet or um, in text format. But in reality, lots of all old map data is all text-based. You know, well before desktop computer mapping with a GIS, um, before spreadsheet and text-based data, a lot of things were handwritten. Um, many legal definitions to this day uh, are still defined numerically and textually. And so that's why we see so much of that um, type of data used within the geographic calculator. Just to mention quickly, uh, the point database forward and inverse job um, performs the same calculation, um, a forward or an inverse, as we saw in the interactive job, uh, just on a, a spreadsheet set of data. The point database scale and translate job uh, best for um, you know working in a very specific scenario where we may need to um, allow a user to specify you know translation and rotation parameters when a transformation isn't otherwise known or control points don't exist um, so a very nice job and similar goes for the best fit um, much more common in local engineering systems you know, whether we're talking mining, natural resource exploration, et cetera, um, and fitting a local system to um, a known system through the use uh, of control points. So if that's something you have interest in, please let us know um, and we can go into that in more detail. One of the more popular jobs in the geographic calculator is the vector data conversion. And, and this job, as you'll see, looks almost more simplified than the interactive job. We choose a, whatever vector file we want to load in. In this case, I just happen to have a um, township map here of the, the state of Maine. It happens to be a shape file. Again, specify my source coordinate system, my target coordinate system, and the transformation that I want to use. So again, a very familiar layout to us um, really keeping things, you know, as simple and straightforward as possible. The raster transformation job then is, is as we would expect, used for raster data, um, both imagery and terrain data. Very similar to the vector job. In this case, though, we may also need to reference um, some sort of external uh, spatial reference file. Um, not necessarily in this case. Um, all the source data is stored in that SID file, but um, if you need to reference a separate file, you can. Again, though, very similar source target coordinate system and choose our transformation. One thing that I think is important to pause and note here, um, both for the raster and the vector-based jobs, uh, each of these jobs supports a pretty good variety of formats of data. Um, we can see a long list of supported raster input formats, and similar goes for the output format types as well. 
And, and really what, what we're trying to do here is provide users with access um, to the most common standardized popular formats that they may need to work with. Uh, and I think that's important to note, you know, so that whatever you file format you may be starting with, you can bring it into the application and then export it to whatever format you need. Um, similarly, the vector job supports, uh, oh, about, I think, 20 or so popular file formats. So a wide variety of vector data that you can work with there as well. Before moving on to look at a job in detail, a couple things I will highlight uh, just as food for thought and something you may want to ask us to speak about in more detail later. Uh, a couple types of jobs that may be of interest to you. Um, I'll point out the um, land survey summary job. So if you're someone who works um, with some of the ATS uh, grids up in Canada, that may be of interest to you. We also have uh, an area calculation job and sometimes slightly popular as well, the line intersection job. Um, so for things such as calculating area and also calculating where a line may intersect with another line. Uh, if things like that are of interest to you, please let us know and we can get into that in more detail. Rather than working through um, a large variety of jobs. I think what we'll do is use the interactive conversion as a baseline, given that so much uh, is similar across all the popular jobs within the application. It's this great way, you know, for us to highlight um, the power of geographic calculators data transformation. So by far, Geographic Calculator is built on the largest commercial um, geodetic parameter database. What's even more important, I think, is that all of that is available to you as the user. And we'll see that as we start to dig into things here. So you don't necessarily have to wonder what the relationships and the parameters of your coordinate systems are or what transformations um, are being used because you as the user can dig into and see all of that information very clearly um, and we're going to set up a job here to discuss how that's done. So in this case again I'm going to be transforming a single point. Anytime I choose to pick a source coordinate system I have the option to, to do so based on my geographic area. And this allows me to select on a map. And it can be uh, very handy. It gives us a quick way to filter and manage the over 5,000 uh, geodetic definitions that we have in our parameter database. So if I choose yes, I have a little map brought up. A couple different ways I can search. I'm just going to search by selecting a point. So just to show you here, that makes a little, little target point on the map. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select one uh, in Maine here, so where Blue Marble Headquarters is located, generally speaking. And then I'll hit OK. And so what I see here is that if I go to All, I have a very large list um, of definitions available to me. Now as I scroll through, um, what you'll see certainly, some of these are WGS84 based or other global systems. Um, so we'll see some ITRF here as well, right? Because a global system is going to be available at any given location. We might see some more specific options. Um, some of the North American datum, NAD27, um, NAD83, and other local systems of that nature. Now what's important to note here is you're never going to see a system that is not valid at the given point you selected. So I could help refine my search before I even start digging into um, my options in detail. If I were to choose not to search 
based on the map. So if I choose no here, I'll get just my general coordinate system picker. Now, of course, by default, it's navigated to the option I have selected in the job. But we have the ability to use the um, tree view here on the left to navigate a bit better, or in a bit more detail, I should say. Let's take a look at all the types of coordinate systems that are available to us here. So geodetic, uh, obviously those are all of our latitude longitude based systems. Projected systems, these are all of our flattened map projections. Um, you know, UTM being one of the major popular projection types. Um, state plane for those of us in the US or other, you know, local um, projected systems for those of you in other countries. Some of the less popular things, um, fitted systems, I realize I, I glossed over this earlier, but a fitted system um, is derived from the point database best fit job. So I mentioned that the best fit job allows us to relate local engineering points to a known coordinate system. And the result of that is actually a fitted uh, coordinate system that would be available here to us. Um, of course, I haven't made any yet, so nothing exists in this folder. Geocentric systems are, um, you know, much more academic, Cartesian-based uh, on the center of the Earth, not used too often. Um, similar with string systems, um, very special purpose I mentioned earlier. Um, that land survey summary job that works with the ATS systems, those would be um, examples of string systems. Any of these can be navigated into, so you can expand a section. Um, they're sorted most often geographically, so we can you know, search by geographic region, um, UTM being an exception since it's so popular. Um, around the world, we can expand into, if we needed, UTM and find a variety of subfolders. Perhaps we want to find WGS84 UTM systems. And all of those are available to us here. Let's navigate back up, though, and we'll use just where we were earlier um, as our example. So I navigated into geodetic, and specifically I'm looking at North America and we'll just take a look here at NAD27, since that's the system I have selected in my current job. I think what's important to note at this stage is that, um, you know, right, we say out of the box we have over 5,000 geodetic definitions. But on top of that, it's fully customizable. Um, so you can, you know, customize anything at any level. Um, where you may need to adjust parameters of open and systems that can be edited. Um, very often, you know, uh, a, a system will be adapted a little bit to a local region and you may need to adjust certain parameters on of that and all of that is possible. Let's take a look now at NAD27. If I right click on an object, I have the option to view its info. When I do this, this dialog um, <clears throat> shows me all the information associated with that system that I selected. Uh, an important little tangent here, if um, anyone is interested in the GeoCalc SDK, so our SDK based on this application, um, you would get all of these dialogues here as well. Um, rather than you know, really getting bogged down here, it's important to note that um, everything is exposed and accessible to you, whether that's in the application um, or in the SDK. If we look at the identification tab um, in the info window here, we get some generic remarks about the system. And then importantly, uh, we also have 
these identifiers. And these have a variety of codes based on issuer. This is important because very often we may be, you know, working with or referencing systems um, from two different entities. So we might have the Blue Marble Geographics code, and then also the even more popular EPSG code. And a whole variety of other codes and issuers that might uh, have this system and identify it. So a really quick and easy way to make sure that we are in fact working with the definition that we intend to. Let's go back to the definition tab here for a second. Um, I think probably the most important thing to understand here uh, is this usages tab. So usages are um, a relatively new piece of the EPSG um, that takes the old area of use and adds what's called a scope to it. So a usage is made up of an area of use, so in this case North America, and then a scope, so how or what it's applied to. Um, area of use is by far still the most common um, bit of information that someone may want from here to see the area of use of where their system is valid. An important thing to note um, about areas of use um, are that Geographic Calculator also has a, a large amount of administrative tools. Um, and so we have the ability um, to restrict how systems are selected for our users based on area of use. And as we'll see shortly in our picker, uh, the picker, once we add information to it, um, is going to be restricted by area of use as well. So even another way to help further refine um, the correct objects that are available to us. Let's get back though to setting up um, the rest of this job. So I'll close my windows here and I don't need to select a system because I already have what I want selected. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going from, in this case, NAD27 to NAD83 projected to UTM zone 19 North. Now the target coordinate system picker will look more or less identical to the source, so we're not going to dig into that too much. Um, but what I want to do uh, is take a look at the datum transformation option um, because this is really where geographic calculator shines, I think. Very often there are many ways to get from one system to another. Um, and that can be overwhelming to a lot of people because, you know, naturally not all of us are geodetic experts. And so geographic calculator really helps us to make the informed and correct decision easily. So we're not so stumped on how do I get from A to B. When I open our coordinate uh, transformation window here, this list by default gets filtered by whatever point or data I have loaded. So whatever job I'm working in, whether you know maybe I'm in the vector job or the point database job, this will automatically get filtered by area of use based on what coordinates I have available to me. So in this case, the transformations that I am seeing here are all the ones which are valid at this location to get from NAD27 to NAD83. To further help us refine um, what transformation we may want to use, um, you know, all transformations have a little bit of wiggle in them, we'll say. Any data transformation is inherently just a bit imprecise. And so what we want to do is choose what's best for us using um, the accuracy column here. And we can see the accuracy related to each 
transformation. Some of these are a single step transformation. So I have highlighted NAD27 to NAD83. In this case, that also happens to be the most accurate transformation. Some of these then are two-step transformation. So I'll first, you know, in this case, go from NAD83 to WGS84, and then to NAD83 from there. So anytime you see a two-step transformation, you'll see the accuracy for each step. These dashed marks indicate that there's no published accuracy for that, um, that step of the transformation. And so probably not something we would want to use um, given that we don't know what accuracy we'll be, we'll be working with there. Uh, generally speaking, all of this accuracy, inf accuracy information is published and pulled uh, from the EPSG. Uh, so we you know, rely on those updates to keep everything in Geographic Calculator um, as up-to-date as possible. And you can see uh, the reference EPSG code here um, for a given transformation. So we are in fact going to select the transformation that I have highlighted here. And I can see its area of use on the map if I want a visual. Before we select it though, I just want to take a quick tangent um, for our US-based users. So we have um, NADCON 5 transformations listed here. And um, NADCON 5 is the new um, national survey standard in the US. It is what will support the new um, NATREF systems and all the associated updates that are coming from the NGS in, well, now they're saying 2025. So in a few years, we're going to have a whole new slew of national reference systems. Um, however, um, while NADCON 5 will work with those, it will also work with all the um, current national systems as well. So we're ahead of the curve on that aspect. We have it ready to go and users can utilize it um, for any of the current transformations where it's available. That being said, I'll go back and select my system. And then once I do so, executing a job is as simple as choosing uh, calculate. When my text turns black, I know that um, my process has completed. I can see my new coordinate value now. And if needed, I can take a look at the bottom of my screen here and get a better feel for the steps as things processed. So this is a very quick process. We don't get much in the way of a status update. It goes very quickly. When you're working with larger data, um, it can be helpful to reference what is going on here. So before I let you go, uh, a couple other quick things to highlight. Um, Another powerful feature of Geographic Calculator is the ability to work with a vertical datum. Um, these days, especially um, as we're starting to work with more uh, advanced, you know, GNSS satellite-based location information, uh, working with vertical datum is becoming even more important. So you can always add a vertical parameter to any of your jobs where applicable. This may be of special interest for those of you um, who are working with LiDAR data, uh, and that may be you know, handled in the vector data conversion job where you need to transform uh, vertical data. Going off of my mention of the idea of the um, updated national coordinate reference systems that are coming um, and how um, heavily they are going to be reliant on time, Global Mapper also um, fully supports time dependency. So we're not just concerned with where you are, but when you were there. Uh, you know, really the last 40 years since GNSS has gotten so popular, um, time dependency allows us to help account for uh, the motion of tectonic plates. Uh, in the US, that's done through um, what's called HTDP. Um, Australia has really led the way in this with uh, 14 parameter transformations. So anytime we're working with time, we might enter a, a date for our source and our target. And then of course, uh, we would see a corresponding 
time-dependent transformation as well. The last thing before I let you go, uh, anyone who's working in oil and gas or natural resource exploration, you might be interested to know we have a, a seismic survey conversion job as well. Um, that allows us to work with um, seismic based data such as any of the variety of seg formats um, so just be aware that that's available to you as well certainly something we can get into in more detail if necessary in general though i hope this was a useful overview of the application uh, tried to re you know really highlight all, all that it can do for us and, and how powerful of a tool this can be to have in our tool sets so please let us know if you have any.